In this final tutorial, we are going to talk about the interface of CryEngine 3 SDK and how to navigate inside the viewports. Now, the first thing I would recommend to do when you open up CryEngine 3 SDK is to go ahead and open up the example map. This example map comes with the downloadable version and it's the easiest and the fastest way to get an idea of what's possible inside CryEngine as well as you can fly around and you can kind of get familiar with how to move around inside the viewport and get familiar with using SDK. So let's go ahead and launch our forest map. Uh, we can go to file, open, we have forest and you can also see that I made a copy of the forest map just in case if anything happens that I do with the map I can always go back and revert to the original copy. So let's go ahead and you know, let's go to forest cry and let's open that up. So once we have the map opened up uh, we can take a look around and we can fly around the environment in here. So the first thing is let's cover how to maneuver around the viewport. So if you hold down the right mouse button and move it left, right, up and down, you're able to look around. If you hold down the middle mouse key and pan left, right, up and down, you can pan around the viewport. And if you want to move around the viewport, if you use the WASD keys, you can go back, forward, side to side, just like you would when you're playing a first person shooter and by pressing the right mouse button key and holding it down and looking around you can move around and look and this is a very intuitive way of moving around the viewport inside CryEngine now right now we are seeing all these helper objects uh, cluttering the scene we can turn this off by going up here at the top and this first key in the viewport if we press that down we can turn off the helper keys and the hot key for turning on and off the helpers if you press shift and spacebar you can cycle them on and off so now that we have the scene a little bit more cleared up we can take a look around and fly around and uh, closer look at some of the environment inside the crunch and uh, example map next if we want to speed up or slow down how fast the camera moves and this helps uh, when you have a larger scene and you want to navigate to a, another a part of the map a lot faster or when you are detailing and you are up here and close now right now the speed is just way too fast here on the bottom we have the speed function key input we have right now we it's set to 1 we can set it to 10 which is super fast and we can go at any point in the map with uh, super speed and we can turn it down to 0.1 which is going to be super slow which is going to be very useful for uh, detailed work and we can also input our custom one we can input 3 we can input 5 and uh, this will cycle through uh, different camera speeds another very useful key in the viewport right next to the speed terrain collision right now we have it turned on this means that if we get closer to the terrain the camera will not go through we're able to have collision with the terrain now if we turn this off we can go right through the terrain now this is very useful key uh, for when you are wanting to edit terrain or just get a better view of where you are in the world without going through the terrain and uh, uh, by turning the collisions on and off uh, you have that function next let's talk about some of the viewport functions and having different viewports so right now we have our main perspective viewport which is how your map will look inside the game uh, we can make this larger and smaller uh, by dragging and resizing the viewport and we can also change the resolution of how big this viewport is by right clicking and setting any of these numbers to how big the, the window of editor is next we have viewport options if you right click on this gray bar you bring up a pull down menu of how you want this viewport to render so we can go to wireframe we can go to point mode labels or any other renderable viewport option we can also configure a different layout of how we want this viewport to appear now I keep this at the perspective viewport only 
eye, but you have quite a few options right in here in that you can customize it to what you're comfortable with. Now, if you want to get a different viewport, if you go under view, you have top, front, left, perspective, and you can change the view to any of the other orthographical viewports. You also have all the other windows that are important inside CryEngine, and you can change this view into any of the CryEngine editor windows here. Uh, but we will cover most of these in the later tutorials. Uh, but for right now, and just knowing that you have an option, changing any of the orthographical viewports as well as opening any of these windows up inside the main viewport just gives you uh, an extra few options. Now, you can cycle through top, front, side, and perspective viewport by holding down Control, Tab. This will cycle through all four main viewports inside the main window right here. So control tab will go through top, front, left, and perspective. Now here on top you have various toolbars inside CryEngine. Most of these we will cover on need basis. I'm not going to go over these right now. Uh, we will cover them in later tutorials when we need to use them. If you right click on any of the gray space, you can add any extra toolbars or take them off to minimize the clutter. You can also reposition any of these closer or further away and customize the toolbar more to what you need. But for right now, in this example map and the getting started tutorial, uh, we're not going to go over these until later. Another important interface is the rollout bar. Here on the right hand side, you have four tabs. You have objects, terrain, display, and layers. For right now, we're going to skip objects, terrain. Uh, these two important roller bar tools we'll cover in more detail when we actually create objects and terrain. But for right now, in this example map, I want to cover display and layers. Display roller bar tab allows you to turn on and off some of the objects that are inside the scene. So when we are looking inside the CryEngine example map, it could be very overwhelming to look at this environment and see, wow, there's so much going on here. How can I create something like this? So we're going to kill the mystique of this example map by going through and beginning to turn off some of these properties. So let's turn off the clouds. And you can see some of these elements will get turned off. Turn off the decals. You can see that some of the decals right here got turned off. And by doing this, it allows you to uh, kind of deconstruct the map and get an idea of how this map was created. So let's kill detail textures. And you can see the detail textures on the terrain disappear. Let's kill the fog. Uh, let's get rid of global illumination. Let's get rid of imposters, light beams. Uh, let's get rid of the ocean and you can see uh, that we have no ocean and we just have the bottom floor. Uh, let's get rid of some of the particles which was this waterfall. Uh, let's get rid of some procedural vegetation. Get rid of the roads. We can see that the roads disappeared. Let's get rid of some of the shadow maps. Let's get rid of the skybox. Uh, we can leave the skybox. And uh, let's get rid of the terrain. So we can see what part of this map is made up of terrain, which is majority of the map. And let's get rid of vegetation. So you can see it got rid of majority of the objects. And we can take a look at how uh, this map is made up of terrain, some custom objects, some models. Having these uh, render settings, you can turn on and off some of the elements when you're working on your map. So for example, you may turn off the fog. Uh, and you may turn off the ocean when you are painting the bottom floor. So let's go over to the Layers tab. The Layers tab is different from the Display Render settings because the Layers tab is controlled and created by the designer. All these layers were created by the person who worked on this map. And you can place any objects on any other layers to control what can be seen inside the viewport. So for example, here, all these icons of the eye means this layer is visible inside the viewport. If I begin to turn some of these off, you can see that many objects inside the scene disappear based on the layer and what I'm turning on and off. 
This allows you to work on the environment in specific sections. By having everything else turned off, you can focus on one area and then move on to another and turn off another area. This is a really great workflow uh, by placing certain objects inside on its own layer. And we can open some of these up and get a better look at what is on each individual layer. So by turning some of these off, so let's fly up to the first main section of the map. By turning some of these off, you get to see what is made up out of objects, what is terrain, what is foliage, and going between these two, the render settings which are, cre which are set by the engine and cannot be controlled or created by the user, by having the layers tab you have the best of both worlds. By going in here you can turn off the fog, you can turn off all the other elements, as well as going back into the layers and you can control what can be seen at any given point of the map. The second little window is the ability to control what can be selected and what cannot be selected inside the viewport. So let's go beginning to of the map right down here. Right here in this section, uh, right now we cannot select any objects. It's because they're turned off from being selected. All we need to do is we need to turn them on. And now, once they have been turned on for us to select, we can begin to manipulate and move these objects around and we can take a look at how each object is constructed how it's placed inside the world uh, what it is and we can move them around and we'll go in more detail what exactly what I'm doing and how I am manipulating these objects in a later tutorial but being able to take a look at this map going through the render settings and going through the layers you can kill the mystique of this entire environment by taking a look at each individual element and how each section of the map is constructed. What makes up the terrain, what makes up all these objects, how they're placed inside the world. You can get a better sense of how this entire map was constructed. So what I would recommend when you're beginning to learn CryEngine SDK is to open up the example map and get comfortable inside the viewport. Fly around, change the speed, make sure you turn on or off the terrain collision. Uh, modify some of the properties of the viewport and take a look at the render settings and the layer settings tab by turning on and off of some of these objects inside the viewport. Get comfortable at navigating inside the viewport uh, and take a look at the example map and how it was constructed. And the last thing I want to leave you with is how to place yourself inside the map to take a look at from in-game point of view and the way you do that is you position the camera close to the ground so the character doesn't fall and if you press control G on the keyboard this will spawn you inside the map where you are inside the perspective viewport and here I am spawned inside the map I can take a look at and run around the map to test